<laughs> Hello. Uh, depending on when you're watching this episode, I can wish you a happy holidays, happy new year, or I hope your new year is off to a great, gentle, and wonderful start. This is our episode uh, for end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. It is our third episode of season seven of your loved LGBTQ plus talk show. Let's call it the pandemics holiday season episode special. <laughs> hope everyone is keeping safe. It obviously has been a challenging year for many of us. And so why not start the new year with an episode filled with laughter? I will tell you more shortly why why so. But first, my little co-host, Cowboy Jelen Hal El Hashim, would wants to say hello to you. <laughs> Hi everyone. And we're all still filming virtually and safely. The first two episodes of the season were awesome. Uh, and they featured two great guests. Uh, the star of Hairspray, uh, Nikki Blonsky, and, and music activist and artist and wonderful man, uh, Tim Arnold from the UK. If you haven't seen the episodes, try to catch them. So uh, back to the laughter comment. I did some research on laughter and here's what I found. I'm gonna read this actually. Here's what I found for you. Um, laughter is, it is said, is the best medicine. We've heard that. And there's a lot of evidence that laughter does lots of good things for us. So what does it do? It reduces pain and allows us to tolerate discomfort. It reduces blood sugar levels, uh, increasing glucose tolerance in diabetes, diabetics, and uh, non-diabetics alike, so in both. It improves your job performance uh, especially if, you, if your work depends on creativity and solving complex problems. Its role in, in intimate, um, there's more, relationships is vastly underestimated and it really is the glue of a good relationship or a marriage. Very cool. Laughter establishes or restores a positive emotional climate and a sense of connection between two people. In fact, some researchers believe that the major function of laughter is to bring people together. What a wonderful gift. Uh, and all the health benefits of laughter may simply result from the social support that laughter stimulates. There you have it. And bringing people together is what our guest today does. She is funny, sweet, energetic, and very much community spirited. Help me welcome to the show, Hispanic Canadian award-winning comedian, actor, activist, and playwright, or in her own words, most famous LGBTQ Nicaraguan Canadian stand-up comic in the world, Martha Chavez. <laughs> Hey, hello, Antoine. Thank you for having me in your show. Hello, doggy. What's the name of the doggy? <laughs> That's Cowboy. Hi, cowboy. Cowboy. Hello, cowboy. I have cats, but they are unmanageable. You know how cats are. They don't listen. You now, cowboy heard his name and he wants to climb on me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, welcome okay. to On the Couch, Martha. Uh, Thank you. How was, how was your day? Tell me, tell me how is your day so far? What does, a oh. what does a comedian daily life look like? How is it different than the rest of us common people? <laughs> well, you know, um, usually we go to bed. We, are, we have vampire hours. <laughs> you know, like we have vampire hours. We go to bed very late because we come back from a show and your adrenaline is up or maybe we come back from another town. Yeah. And then you, you come and then you... You watch TV, the news catch up and stay up till four o'clock in the morning. You wake up, let's say at 11, uh -huh. at 11 and then uh, I work out. Then oh. I go over my jokes, I read, uh, I am obsessed, like, you know, I am obsessed with the news. I can't I wait. Love the this news. <laughs> I can't wait till this nightmare ends, you know, like when, when finally Joe Biden is sworn as president, I will feel like if I just took off my bra. That's the <laughs> way I'm You're very feel. verbal on social media about, about, about your position on that. You know why? Because I am Latina and I am a lesbian and um, I am everything. I am the trifecta. I'm a woman, I'm Latina, and I'm a lesbian and I'm fat. 
I'm everything that Trump hates. Oh, I am practically Rosie O'Donnell, but Spanish. <laughs> so, you know, I can't wait till he leaves because I have a lot of relatives that live in, uh, yeah. in the United States that live in fear. And I have the other side of my relatives that, um, that are uh, fundamentalist Christian that love him. Oh. So I can't wait till I can <laughs> laugh at them. <laughs> I bring people together, but, like but, you, you know said. What? We all we all hope for a world where things are decent and happy, and everybody is is accepted and everybody is 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 welcomed at the table. So yes, you you have been working. Um, you've been actually remarkably busy doing yes. events lately on Zoom and virtual platforms a lot. How, a lot. How, how are you finding, this is all obviously because of COVID, how are you finding adapting to the new technology? Well, you know, I at the beginning I was reluctant okay. because, you know, I'm old, you know, I'm not like the young generation that they do everything online, but I'm, I adapt really quickly. That is, that is the, the great thing about having been born in my country, okay. in Nicaragua, because we went through an earthquake and we had to adapt. We went through the revolution, we had to adapt. We went in exile, we had to adapt. And so now we are inside, we have to adapt. And it's, it's, it's great, you know, because I'm chronically late. <laughs> and uh, and now I just like a chaka chaka chaka. I just put my makeup Walk from one room to another room. <laughs> room, room, room to bed, because I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a makeup loving lesbo. So I just put my name my makeup. I pull my shorts. I have my show shorts. <laughs> These are the shorts that I always wear. Okay. And then I just dress up like this. And that's it. We're ready. <laughs> I do miss though. I do miss the energy. That the people okay. give you, but I, I, uh, I am conscious that we have to wait till Thank everything is fine. We have to, we have to stay safe. I mean, um, if I was filming the show, usually I would be down at Buddies and Bad Times Theater now with you. It, it there's yeah. nothing, there's nothing that that um, replaces the human, uh, you know, face to face touch. But for the time being, I'm very proud of our community and of all the artists and creative people who figured out very quickly how to bring entertainment to people using all the technology yeah. available. If it was, and you know, like the artists are, are not respected in society, yeah. but if it wasn't because of us, you will be bored. You will be bored to death. You know, there wouldn't be music, there wouldn't be movies, there wouldn't be anything. If it wasn't because of, of artists, us, you know, and, uh, and I want to be respected. <laughs> Stand-up comedy is an art form. You are, we are, you are very respected. Actually, it takes me actually a very good segue into the next question. We worked on two events that you hosted uh, lately that somehow we both ended up crossing paths. I gave I gave you a, an award. Or thank you. And a virtual award, yes. So I received uh, a little shameless plug. I received uh, the Community Business Leader of the Year Award uh, at the... Uh, Canada's yeah. LGBT plus Chamber of Commerce Gala, which is usually attended by some of the most prominent. Uh, the most prominent. It is very a very shishi affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I hosted almost, I've been hosting it for three years. This one was not my favorite because when I saw how I look on camera, I was like, I, I look horrible on camera because they, they film us with a little, you know. I, I don't know the light. I, 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 I thought you did an amazing job. I also, honestly, I, I and thank and you. Same thing for the other event that we can talk about. I felt that you brought us into the venue while it was virtual. I felt like we were there with you. You really uh, give yourself a lot of credit. You adapted wonderfully to. to thank you. I love those guys, and I love you too. I I loved uh, hosting the event for you. It was amazing. Uh, oh, like, right. That's, that's how I've been training, you know, hosting that's, for the that's gay people. Other things. So uh, you hosted virtually a community, uh, the honorees and meet and greet of the Inspire Awards. And we are hoping to have you in person when we get back to producing the events in person. But I have to say that the team at, at the Inspire Awards, which is by every way, um, that's a community organization that celebrates the queer community and accomplishments that I'm involved in as, as a volunteer, as the chair of the board of directors. But Martha hosted our event lately. And after the event, we all said at the board that you did an amazing job. Your Thank jokes you. were your jokes were timely. You you made very fun and light of the COVID and the pandemic, but you also 
you have this knack, uh, Martha, that, that I'm feeling uh, watching you lately is you're, you're very real. You engage people <laughs> that you kind of make the community feel that they're there with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I gotta, I, I have to be real. Like the song says, to be real, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, so how did you feel? Well, how did you feel about the two events? How how are you feeling about all those uh, hosting events like now? I love them. You know, I love I love hosting for you. It, it gives us, uh, like you said, we had to pretend that you that we were there, and uh, uh, I didn't. I hadn't seen the other ones, which uh, usually when I host a big uh, event, I, I usually know about the other performers, so I can adapt before. Okay. But but this time I had a few things prepared. And like I, I brought I brought my masks to your events, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, when uh, when she sang, sang "Seasons of Love," I had my very own version of "Seasons of Love." Remember, I have to look for those lyrics because I don't find them. But uh, I, I don't remember them, but I, they, it was funny. And uh, and you have to make light like this is a horrendous situation we are in. In the other hand, we are of the lucky people. Yes, actually, because the, we are here talking to each other. We are luckier than a lot of people in the whole world. So yeah, exactly. I remember when I was a child that there was a an earthquake in Nicaragua. My uncles they would talk by ham radio, <laughs> you know. Oh, wow. And we people were not complaining that we did, that were, we were gaining weight uh, yeah. because <laughs> there was no food. So you know, like uh, we are lucky, we are gaining weight. And watching TV in a disaster <laughs> when there are so many families that are going without. That's those. I don't like to talk about what I do charity because I think that that would be a self uh, praise. Fair but enough. we that we do we do charities it's also oh, because nice. because uh, there are a lot of. Uh, of oh, especially I live near near Wellesley. I live near Church and Wellesley. And there is a lot of pain there in our street. Huh? Yeah, there yeah. is a lot. I don't know if you live around, but it's a there are a, there are a lot of more homeless people. Yeah, and um, some of that, them are screaming. The pandemic is not a joke. There's a lot of people struggling from businesses yeah. to people, mental health to addictions, all that. Yeah, all day there is people screaming. Ah! Yeah. And I, I, one of the things I wonder is how can I help them? And another thing is when is it gonna be me? That is going to be screaming oh. in the street because mental health is very fragile, you know, That's and this very, has been hard on all of us. It's very, very sensitive of you and very, um, it's a lot of humility. Um, we, we, we have to do good work. We have to help where we can as, as humans, as a society. Um, yeah, you know what my wife does? Uh, we had a big jar of change. Okay. We had a big jar of change in the, in the, at home, like in December, we change it. We go in and maybe it's like 200 bucks or something. We That's have a, actually, a big jerk of change. And then like we've been getting, you know, like a little bit so of, you know, like with toonies and, and loonies. Yeah. And then we we put it in plastic bags. She, she puts it in plastic bags and, and she does, she's not the one who goes out. I am the one who goes out. <laughs> so she sends me out to give to the homeless in the street. And then I, and then I go, but it's summer, like in the summertime, I, I don't know who's homeless and who's not homeless. Cause some people dressed, you know, like uh, with the torn pants and everything. And she goes, start yelling, change the coinage. Is there, is, there any, is there anybody without a postal code here? This is for you, coinage. <laughs> and then I go, they're gonna think, they're gonna think I am not. And then she goes, no, they're going to think you're an agent of change. <laughs> That's actually a wonderful line. And funny, funny you shared this with me. I actually do this. I have the same thing. I don't have a jar. I have a big ball. And for the whole year, I dumped all the change in. And then yes. for a while, I, I kind of pull it together and decide which charity or which somebody who needs it to, to give it to. But now it's like little by little you have to give. You know, like uh, it, it has been hard. Then there is the other people that uh, like my father-in-law, for example, he's in the hospital, not because of COVID, but because uh, old age, like he just went and he's been waiting there forever. He's been waiting like like uh, two, three days to get a, a bed. A oh, proper, a proper oh. room, yeah, here in, in Canada, in okay. Mississauga. Okay. So and like, like 
like ours. Oh, like that's... like his story, there is millions of stories like that. And then there are idiots in the streets screaming that uh, no mask, yeah. no this. You know, like I feel like like jumping and beating them with a stick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the pandemic has shown us a lot of things, you know. True. We're going to take a break here. We will be back. back okay let's let's move on from the pandemic events and all the fancy and inventive ways we have been able to work around it and let's talk about your work in general and over the years you yes. are you are a regular on the comedy circuit in north america and and north america and latin america yeah when did you start your career yeah. in comedy and how did you get your start i started in 1994 Okay. <laughs> in Montreal, in Montreal, Montreal where, the festival, where Just for Laugh Festival, yeah, because I used to live in Montreal. And, uh, you know, in, in stand-up comedy, you start, and the, the only way you learn is by doing it, okay. doing it, doing it, doing it. It's, it's like, a, it's not a trade that you can just read in front of your mirror and, ha, ha you're going to go be funny in front of people. No, no, because... We think it's a monologue, but it's not a monologue. It's a dialogue between you and the audience. You never know how a joke is going to work until you try it to an audience. Fortunately, in Montreal, I was part of, of a small, the small Anglophone. <laughs> <laughs> Anglophone community. And uh, in my time, unfortunately, there were only two women, Heidi Foss, and I. Oh, wow. Cool. And uh, I mean, two women that, that dedicated it because uh, the first time I did it, I, I don't want to tell you the first time because I, I always say it in shows. Okay. So it's a, it's a known story. But the, the, after the first night that I did it, I woke up the next day with the, in this state of grace. Wow. Like I knew that this is, the, I knew it caught me. It was, it was like a disease that caught me. And, and 27, some, 26 years later, I'm still here. I'm still here. But uh, it was like, so little by little. So every weekend I would do uh, five, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And that's the way you start building. Okay. Then, um, well, the festival was there. Okay. So I did my first festival very soon in my career. And because I am so different because of the ethnicity yeah. and the accent, I, I, people, I, people paid attention. So I started having good opportunities. Kenny Robinson, a comedian by the name of Kenny Robinson, came to Montreal once. And uh, he's the founder of, of a show called The Nubian Disciples of Prior which is a, a comedy review of, of black people. But then I wasn't black, but he, he invited me to do the show in, um, in Montreal. And then I did the show in Montreal and then it, it was the first time because remember I started with white people, like white comics. That's how I started. Okay. And uh, the first time I did it in front of an ethnic crowd, 900 people in Montreal. And then he invited me to come to Toronto. Okay. To do the same show for Toronto was for me another country oh. in that days. And then I came to Toronto He's and the, uh, the owner of Yak Yaks, okay. Mark Breslin, saw me and he immediately signed me. And I have been with wow. them ever since, you know. That's wonderful. I actually yeah. remember you before we, we before we connected in the community and, and worked together. I remember you when you say 94, that's kind of when we first arrived to Canada. And I remember watching you in the early days on, on Just for Laughs. With yeah, my first time, my first time in Just for Laughs was 1998. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember watching it with my parents, and we yeah. all that she's different. She's funny. She's different. She's bringing. <laughs> she's bringing some, and and that I I guess because of the Hispanic thing, it it was it was noticeable that you are bringing a different voice to the table. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that, that was a, a good thing for my start and everything. Yeah. And then I moved to Toronto, and then I got the TV shows and, and all of that. And uh, and I never wanted. Well, I visited, and I was signed by a great management company in the United States, but I didn't like it. No. Okay. I I didn't like it. I, I like I, that's that's where they offered me fame and fortune. You know, like in order, like that. Unfortunately, for a Canadian comic, the only way yeah, that you progress, <laughs> the, the only progression, yeah. is to move to the United States to have the big tours, to have the big yeah. money, yeah. That, that to have all the fame. But no, I wanted to, I wanted to be moderately famous. So you didn't want that. Okay, well, no, I didn't want that. And besides, yeah. I I met Linda, and she wouldn't move, and and then I'm happy with her. And that's what I wanted when I when I set up to be famous and rich. I wanted happiness, oh. but but you're not guaranteed that that's gonna give you happiness. I keep I telling to myself, to you. you know what I mean. So she makes me happy. I'm happy here. What would I be doing in the United States? Thank Being you. rejected because they have they are ageist. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, they are ageist and uh, and they are lookist. Yeah. I I found that uh, that out in Los Angeles. I could have been funnier than Sofia Vergara. Mm -hmm. in modern family yeah. but they were never going to give me that role to me you know so i stay here and for or hopefully we still have a, an opportunity that our business is going to be better now in canada yeah. and, now, and not only that now we have this medium huh? you know we have this medium. I, actually, I, I am enjoying the virtual stuff i gotta ask yeah. you why um why is it satisfying or important for you to make people laugh I don't know. <laughs> it's a way. It's a way. It's a attention. I have no idea. It's a, as I told you. It's a vocation. Okay. It's a vocation. It's not only to live to make people laugh. It's it's translating yourself. Not only your my language, but translating my 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 experience. Translating even my race, okay. even my gayness. Okay. Translating myself to the audience okay. and, co and making bridges, communicating. That's what I say, you know. Uh, I am from the church of laughter. I love that. <laughs> you know, the church of laughter, because I noticed I grew up Catholic. Did you, have you ever noticed that, that, that anybody in, your, in the Bible laugh? No! <laughs> Did you grow up Muslim? <laughs> I am, so, Catholic. I am Catholic. Actually. You're Catholic too. So the, the, have you ever read and Jesus <laughs> multiply the wine and he LOL? No. <laughs> they never laugh in the Bible. Funny. Uh, touring is a big part of a comedian life. Uh, tell me a story about maybe the oddest, zaniest, craziest venue you found yourself at performing when you're on the road. Oh, the craziest one was uh, uh, by the pipeline. Okay. By the pipeline, because as I said, comedy is translation. And I arrived I arrive, uh, at the show. This is a little town by the pipeline in Alberta. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, like remote, remote the show. It was a two people show. And uh -huh. then I, I was headlining it. And I knew when I saw the audience, I knew. These people are not, and I are not going to understand each other. There was nobody ethnic, you know. For all we know, they had never seen Modern Family. Even. <laughs> they have never heard or or seen anybody that looked like me. The the more color people who had in their face was petroleum. That's what it was. So then, um, but so but then so then the the how do you say the challenge. Uh -huh is to communicate but how can you communicate with people that have are hammered so hammer you you, i got hammered myself so it was like yeah so that was uh, the oldest part and then at the end uh -huh. this this uh woman and her boyfriend invited me and the other comic to go have a an ice cap in their um at their house and we go and uh, and as soon because we wanted to continue the drinking now i don't drink thank god okay. 10 years but uh but uh 
but we wanted to continue the party. And so we go to their house and they had two facing toilets. <laughs> and they show us their toilet very proudly. Oh my God. And then and then I started and I said to the other guy, Sam, Sam was in. I said, Sam, you have to kiss me at one moment and we have to pretend that we gotta go and make love because I don't wanna stay here. I think these people wanna <laughs> kill us. <laughs> I don't like oh, because the woman said to me, you know what? She said, I am an angel. Uh, I am an angel from him, and I'm thinking maybe she's the angel of death. <laughs> and then and I said to Sam, you, we had two kids, and then we made out, and then, and then we left with the excuse that we were going to, to go make love, you know, <laughs> like me, the lesbian. But what was it going to do? I, I was not uh, speaking, I, I was not out at the time. Okay. And, uh, it, it was a process to come out, not because I was embarrassed or anything, but because well, any industry is a hard thing to come out yes yeah. no because because they had uh, they had to to deal with my ethnicity yeah 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 you know with the accent with the ethnicity if i talk about the kunilingus they will go <laughs> Does she have an accent with her labia too <laughs> uh yeah i don't know You've been featured on multiple times on all the prestigious festivals in Canada, Just for Laughs, the Winnipeg Comedy Festival, the Comedy Halifax, uh, the We Are Funny That Way, which is an LGBTQ plus festival, and you are yeah. a regular host at the Calgary Folk Music Festival. Oh, I love that one. Okay, that's actually, that's my question. Any of those festivals holds a more special spot for you in your heart? They all hold a different spot. Just for laugh was my first. Okay. But uh, <laughs> and uh, you know that was my first, and uh, and I it is huge international. But Winnipeg is, is like very special to me because they we are family. Okay. Like uh, we are family with Winnipeg. It's, it's a smaller <laughs> festival. It's is more concentrated to Canadians. And then the Calgary Music Festival. I have nothing to do with the with folk music. I like to sing, but look at the voice, the good <laughs> you have a good voice. <laughs> and then, uh, but the Calgary Music Festival, I met so many great people, even the the mayor of Calgary and the premier, <laughs> Rachel Notley, the oh, premier cool. of Calgary. And I make like, four, I made the son of uh, of uh, Leonard Cohen. I met so many. And then also it was like a ten thousands of people and I am there, you know? Nice. Like, uh, you know, that's that's when I realized that I wanted to become maybe a dictator. I don't know, like a huge crowd, you know, I was there and uh, and, and I loved it. I, I love every time I perform. And he's not an ideal performer for a comedian because when there is so many people, it's very hard to 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 wrangle them. Yeah, fair enough. you know. But you just talk to the pit. But the fact that the mayor of Calgary knew my name, Marta. That's awesome. Yeah, Marta. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a fan. Uh, you yeah. also do a lot of radio work. Yes. Uh, you are heard on Laugh Out Loud and the Debaters, and a regular panelist on because. Um, on because because news. News. Yeah, all, all of those are on CBC. How do you enjoy working with these shows? Is radio an exciting platform for you versus performing on the road or at, at on stage? It's a different thing, but I love I love those shows. Okay. I love performing and, and the fact is that I have fans on the CBC that's like a, like my age demographic, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have fans on the CBC and I love that. You know, people recognize me in the street sometimes. Oh. I am at the, at the line in the supermarket and they would turn. Like I talked to the cashier and they would turn, you are a... Seen you before? <laughs> you, 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 Maria! <laughs> no, but they go, you are in the CBC and that I'm like... They recognize me more for the voice, the voice. than they recognize me for the you look. Know what? You know? I, I, and that's very, something very unique you have. I, I Honestly, I could put my hand on the screen. I could still tell it's, it's, it's you because <laughs> you have a very unique accent and a very unique voice and a very unique delivery of, 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 your, yes. of, of, your, of, of your language. Cool. Thank you. Um, thank you. Let's talk about awards a little bit. We're going to start uh, getting more to the personal stuff soon. But uh, awards, you've received quite a few. 
Uh, you were voted Stand-Up Comic of the Year at the 2018 uh, Canadian Comedy Awards. And your debut can comedy album, Chunky Salsa, was featured among the 11 best comedy albums of 2019. How is the feeling? Yes. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations. How is the feeling when one is honored for the work they have and they do? Oh, they love that. I felt it felt great, you know, because we don't, as I said, we don't have many awards in this country. Yeah. And the Canadian Comedy Awards have tried and tried and tried to establish them, to establish themselves as a major force. But unfortunately, there is no funding and uh, there is no, let's say... Um, There's no body, that, a body of work that honors comedians in Canada? Now we can apply for a Juno. Oh, 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 really? Juno yes. included in comedy? Oh, okay. Yeah, Juno comedy. I didn't submit my album this year, oh, but, I will, but if I tape another album in which I, I I will do as soon as we go out in the streets, okay. you know, like uh, to the clubs, yeah. um, will I, 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 I will do another one and, and hopefully uh, I will submit it too. Like I was an idiot only to put an album now. I should have put many, many albums. But uh, sometimes you just postpone, right? I just I just put my first album after 20 years, imagine. More after, more years, after 20 years as a headliner. And uh, you make money that way. You make money on albums? Or go? Not not on selling the album, but on the play. On, they, play on, 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 they play them at Sirius XM. Okay. And you, and you make money, so... It is a uh, it is um, a cool good thing. idea to do. Yeah, cool. Um, mm. You're also a fierce human rights advocate. In your own words, uh, I quote you: "Using humor to challenge the status quo in your different in four different languages." Yes. Uh, uh, what, are, uh, well, what are you most passionate about? Women rights, women and gay rights. But I think that women rights uh, is is the basis. Okay. Of everything, because I think that unless the 50% of the population that we are women are considered equal to men in, the, in every aspect of society, in, uh, in, uh, in government, in, in, in every aspect of society, in policy, yeah. in, uh, in, uh, in, in every, all of that, until we are considered society can't advance, really. I, I hear, hear. I, I am, I'm a huge... Yeah. Of, women, of women right i actually can't believe that thousands of years later and we're still debating whether women are equal to men which is which is not debatable women are exactly equal to men <laughs> yeah we can be as evil as you yeah. look at margaret thatcher <laughs> exactly. Exactly. and eva peron and <laughs> golda <Maier. laughs> yeah. uh, no but uh, but i work with a, i work with i work with an organism that is called the nobel women's initiative nice uh, that is led by five Nobel Peace Prize women. Wow. And I host their, um, their podcast that is called When Feminists Rule the World. And can you imagine that, that, uh, that people get put off by, by the title? When feminists rule the world, they think that you're going to show up like dressed in black in, in dominatrix <laughs> regalia. And you're gonna make men wash your dishes. I don't know what it is that they think. I don't, I don't uh, understand when people uh, take... take um, that somebody wants there to be equal, they take it as if it's an attack on them. It's not an attack on you. It's, it's yeah. just a request to be treated like you, basically. Yeah, but in patriarchy is the foundation of all hatred. Yeah, that's e the even homophobia. Yeah, absolutely. Even homophobia is, is founded there. Racism is founded on that. Uh, the United States are founded on that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> all right. Yes.
Let's continue. Okay, let's get personal. Uh, yes. why, why don't we? Let's start with a bit about you growing up. Tell us more about, uh, you, I'm assuming you, you were born in Nicaragua. I was born in Nicaragua. How was it there? Huh? How was it there? How was growing up there? Well, uh, well you know, uh, my family was middle class. Uh, it was hard because of, of everything else, you know, like uh, everything else going around in the country when, when everything is uh, unstable okay. because of, of the dictatorship yeah. and because of uh, just uh, the, the misery. Yeah, okay. I don't know if you have ever, I don't, you were born in, in, Le in Lebanon. I was born in Kuwait. Kuwait is a rich country, but I come from Lebanon, which has always been uh, a war-torn country. There was always wars in Lebanon, so I understand misery and struggle. And yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. You used to it was a normal thing. Yeah, to see children begging in the streets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a normal thing to even ignore them. Really, it was a it, yeah. You know, it's like you. It's horrible when you get used to to that. Yeah. And then, of course, the revolution. The, the, we had the earthquake, and during the earthquake. Um, during the earthquake, all day, the, the whole city of Managua, my, the capital of my country, fell down. Wow. Uh, uh, we had to move from there to another little town. Our house didn't fall down, but but um, we had to move till they reinforced it and, and everything uh, to my uncle's house in another town. And uh, and then the, the international aid that came to the country, the family of the dictator stole it. Wow. And and he used that opportunity to reinstall himself and become more repressive. And of course, at the same time, there was a gestation of the Sandinistas that they call the, the the revolution. And then, of course, there was a, a bloody bloody revolution that toppled the dictatorship. And then, forty years later, they are the dictators now. So nothing changes in that country. Politics but, is but my childhood was, you know. My child was, uh, I guess, normal considering. Yeah. Uh, and you came. To, he came to Canada directly to Montreal. Yes, I, my parents sent me to Canada. Okay. Uh, the real reason was that my mother found out that I was uh, dabbling in lesbianism. <laughs> <laughs> dabbling in lesbianism. Oh, that's what you said here. You I was dabbling, oh, you that know. That's a big mistake because they sent you to the most uh, open country. To Montreal! <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> Where there is like Disneyland for lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to Montreal. And then they had to run away from the country. They came here? They, they went to Guatemala. Oh. My, pa my parents were lawyers okay. and, uh, you know, like moving from one country to the other, they could at least work on their like paralegals till they got the equivalences. But here, what were they going to come do? Besides, I, 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 I had already discovered lesbianism and then I was, I didn't want them to move here. No, I was happy. They, they, I lived in Canada. <laughs> Canada was my closet. Okay. Because I, I, it was difficult for a Latina, a Latin ex, it's difficult to come up to the parents uh, to this day. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Imagine yeah. the eighties, yeah. You haven't come out to your parents yet? Oh no, no, my my parents, yeah, my parents are are both dead. Oh, sorry. Uh, but uh, my family, yes, they know and they know. But I mean, it'd be hard. You're very open on TV, even about your sexuality and all. So yeah. Yeah, I'm very open. Like, and whoever doesn't like it can kiss my lesbian ass. <laughs> uh, uh, your home life. So you have uh, you have a wife. 
Yes. Are you married? You're married, right? No, not that, not, not officially, married. but I call her a wife. Yeah. Because oh, I've seen you say wife on social media. Okay. Yeah. Do you have cats. Yeah, I, can, I have two cats. Amy. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Amy the cat. As Amy the cat and George George Carlin the cat. Oh, but now we call him Joe Biting because he <laughs> he bites your toes. Biting. Now because we like biting to, at the moment. I know that we won't like him after. <laughs> but uh, the moment we like him, politics changes very quickly. No, well, you know, they are, it's not that he's like the left. Uh, yeah. he, he still is Mister Iraq War and, and all of that, but he's better than this this monster. The one, the one current, of course. Um, what makes you sad? What what brightens your day and what inspires you? Three questions in the same one. So let's start with what makes you sad. What makes me sad? It makes me sad to miss my family so much. Okay. It makes me sad because I mean we are always divided. Here, come here, Linda. Show yourself. Yeah. Oh, no. Show yourself a little. <laughs> come here, come here. She's beautiful. She's my oh. lady Diana. I call oh, her. Come here. She makes she makes me happy. She's the happy. We laugh all day. We laugh. All right, come on to the screen. Hello. Oh, this is Amy. Hello. Oh, Can you please I, look I, like I, Lady Lion? <laughs> oh, yeah. He is gorgeous and the cat is gorgeous. Both, the, the, both of them. I have two identical. This is Georgie. This is Georgie? Or? This is Joe Biden, yeah. Okay. He, you, you should see, I had to, to tape, uh, uh, I had to tape, to do a tape for a festival called, I'm going to send you the clips and the stupid cat, this is the second time. He did it in the, he did it in the summer too. He sta he stole the show. He started walking right walk there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, coming back to your question, it makes me sad to, to miss my siblings so much. And to miss my nana, I still have a, this our second mother. Okay. The woman that raised us when my mother was working. So it's like her second mother. It is our second mother. She's alive. She lives in Guatemala. And then uh, I call her every day on the cool. th thank God for technology, you know, for uh, for uh, on the on the WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. And that ma that lives my day. That lives my day. Okay. What I, makes I, okay, so that brightens your day. What inspires you? What inspires me, um, what inspires, so many things that inspire me. What inspires me is, uh, is uh, the spirit of survival that people have. Oh, like, uh, like like overcoming your circumstances yeah, inspire yeah. me. When I see people, I cry every I, for anything, always on for TV. Hui, 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 hui. I cry for Lady Diana again. <laughs> uh, what personally makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? Uh, Linda. Linda is very funny. Oh, that's so cute. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. No, a, a lot of things make me laugh. But the, I, I laugh the most at my um, I fall past. Okay. Let's say, <laughs> my, my daily adventures, like in the supermarket. Okay. Like, are, you, are you clumsy? <laughs> I'm very clumsy. <laughs> I lose I lose everything. You, you're yeah. clumsy too. I, I lose off. everything. I actually yeah. have, 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 a, have a running commentary on Facebook, very classic Antoine, <laughs> because I wake up, I hit my toes at night, I fall on my face. I'm all, I'm an accident waiting to happen all the time. <laughs> Me too, I'm very clumsy. And, and also uh, like like uh, encounters that I have with, with crazy people. I don't know why I attract, I attract them. <laughs> Uh, finish the sentence. Uh, a world with, without laughter would be China. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the former, so the former USSR. No, I love uh, you know a world without laughter would be paradise, because you know what? what? In paradise, in paradise. Uh, I assume that you didn't laugh because everything was perfect. It's beautiful. That's everything perfect. everything was, per everything was perfect. What a philosophical yeah. answer. I love it. <laughs> yeah, laughter is, is in, you laugh at in, 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 how do you say, in, 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 you laugh at what is odd. Okay. Incongruent. Okay, fair enough. You laugh at when, when something yeah. is incongruent. You laugh uh, uh, at somebody sleeping on a banana peel. Uh, I don't think in paradise they were saying you laugh. Yeah. You you laugh at the at the old quirky things. You laugh because of tragedy. You laugh sometimes in tragedy. Uh, you, you, sometimes during the tragedy, 
something is funny. Like for example, during the earthquake, yeah. that like you would lose a uh, my grandmother lost her ring. Okay. Not during the earthquake. She just lost it because she was like me. Uh-huh. And then and then her excuse I got a ring that my mother had given her. So her excuse was for everything. We lost more during the earthquake. <laughs> 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 she will lose your cat. A lot more was lost during the earthquake. You have to laugh at a, a tragedy. That's it. That's, that's I mean, not a tra- not a tragedy, but during is 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 what we have is our mechanism to cope. To cope. Absolutely. We wouldn't be coping with COVID. This, believe me, if, if it we wasn't didn't laugh at ourselves, uh, if we didn't laugh at ourselves, I ima- even like I mean, if if you can laugh even at the emergency room, if you can see people with cancer laughing, laughter is. It wouldn't thrive in paradise. <laughs> I lost, I lost, I always say, I lost a friend a couple of years ago to cancer, but up until the last moment, he was still laughing because he was, he was, and I really loved his attitude with that. So true. Uh, yeah. Uh, out of tragedy, we can, we can bring comedy and laugh ourselves. Okay. We end the show with the game of quick questions. Yes. And you provide quick answers or whatever comes to mind. Are you ready to play? Yes. Okay. Well, your favorite morning drink? Coffee. Uh, your favorite flower? Do I have favorite flower? You don't? I love uh, orchid. <laughs> orchid. Okay, fair enough. All right. I love orchids. Uh, favorite season of the year? Summer. Summer? You're a, you're a, sum, you're a heat person? Cold? No, well, I am a bicycle person and I don't, like to, I, I don't like to bike in the cold. Fair enough. Uh, your favorite singer, somebody you listen to a lot? Uh, Amy Winehouse. Oh, really? Wow, how cool. I love her. Yeah. Uh, movie you love to watch again and again? Movie that I love to watch again and again? Uh, I love plane trains and automobiles. Oh, God, what a cute movie. Because I love, you know, like when, when, uh, <laughs> when John Candy is in the car. Very good movie. You know, I love, uh, I love, uh, and another movie that I love to watch. Well, I, I, us- I also like sad movies, you know. Okay. But I, I just will go with coming plane trains and automobiles as for <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. Will I like um, Almod- all Almodovar? Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, love and it. I and I love murder. Why do I love murder? I don't you know. like murder movies. All right. I love murder me and murder uh, series. Okay. Cool. I think it's because some, when something is really going horrible too, uh, if you see something more horrible, oh. maybe you feel I don't know, okay. or maybe it's just the way that they have programmed us on and TV. Same, watch I, I mean, there's the question always: Why do people love horror movies? Um, yeah. If you can choose one spot in the world to retire to and spend the rest of your life at, where would that be? Lake Atitlan in Guatemala. Okay. Cool. Nice. Uh, yeah. Your favorite cuisine to dine out? What, where do you go when you go out? When we go out, we go in the neighborhood. We go. Oh, we like we like to go here in the neighborhood to Zambucas because like they Zambucas. make okay. they make a delicious uh, marina uh, tutti mare. Okay, Pasta. yeah, they do actually. Uh, what is the best dish you cook at home? Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the simplest of dishes, okay? But, yeah. But the most delicious of dishes. I love, I love. Throw yeah, I love eggs. It's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Throw everything into into a pan and then crack some eggs on top of. Uh, I like doing it with tomatoes. I like frying eggs with potato. Like everything is good. Is good with everything. Potatoes. Yeah. Um and. Describe your ideal romantic date. My ideal romantic date. Yeah, what would you do on a romantic date that's very special? What would you, how would you plan it? First, we would have a beautiful dinner. Okay. And then we would go to a Mervis show. Because like we are like homosexual old men, we <laughs> love theater? musicals and yeah, theater cool. and live theater. We love that. Like we are, we are subscribers. Okay. So that will be it. And then a nice stroll, coming back home, downtown Toronto, trying not to get murdered. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but that's romantic. And then when we come home, to murder. No. we really are obsessed with murder. Aren't no, we? no, no. I would say because we walk, we walk, we usually walk, we leave downtown St. God, we walk. Uh, we, don't, we don't have romantic dates in which uh, we go for a long walk by the lake or anything because that implies a car and we don't drive. <laughs> so, but we, you know what we love to do? We love to go to Niagara Falls. I love so we we walk, that's our favorite place yeah, in the world. Yeah. We go and then we have a beautiful dinner at Mamma Mia's. Then we also, go, we 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 stroll. We go to the falls. We see the fireworks. Right, right. We are missing that so much that we saw it on TV yesterday. I, I, yeah, we I, played it. We played a person walking in Niagara. <laughs> game over. Uh, game over. Game over. So, uh, any last words? to your fans and our LGBTQ plus community. And please keep safe. Okay. Do not believe people that are not doctors. Okay. Bona fide doctors, wear your mask, wash your hands. Thank you. And don't touch your face you. until we have a vaccine and love each other. Love is the answer. Thank you. Love uh -huh. is the answer. Make sure to like us on Facebook, everyone, at facebook.com backslash join us on the couch. Can I say, can you yeah. also like me on Facebook, comedian yeah. Marta Chavez? Of course you can. Uh, uh, and on, you on it, Chavez with an S at the end, not a Z. And then uh, when feminists rule the world, the second season is coming up. Okay. Out soon. And then uh, the Martha Chavez with an S at the end instead of a Z on twitter which i uh, i don't know a lot about twitter is not my medium i don't like twitter i don't understand it but i i am on twitter you kind of have to be on all those platforms these days <laughs> yeah but nobody pays attention to me on twitter so <laughs> follow me follow me follow please on twitter <laughs> thank you for yeah. watching everyone you are the best audience and viewers in the whole wide world and yeah I thank you antoine thanks everybody i love you take care i love you too bye bye